for the benefit of teachers, school administrators, parents, or anyone else interested in, in our education here in Kenya, I wanted to explain the recent changes to the curriculum that were made by the government. I think they issued a circular on 20th December saying that starting in January 2024, which is right now, uh, there would be some changes in the way the curriculum is delivered. My name is Mike Kipkorir. I am the team leader at CBC App, where we work with teachers and school administrators to simplify their day-to-day -day tasks of assessment, record keeping, and reporting. These changes to the curriculum were occasioned by uh, a presidential working party that was put together by the president to look into CBC and all the concerns that the public had. And they came up with several recommendations and what is being implemented right now in January 2024 is just but some of those recommendations. So those recommendations being acted upon largely revolve around uh, reducing the workload on the students, removing overlaps, and just making sure that the delivery of CBC is smoother. So how exactly is it done? That's what I want to show you right now. So let's begin with early childhood, PP1, PP2, the four years and five year old kids. There's no change that has been made there. So what we had before remains. Lower primary. The main change that was made here is reduction of the overall number of learning areas from eight to seven and reduction of the overall number of lessons per week from 35 to 31. And how was this done? What they did is they combined hygiene and nutrition and environmental activities into one learning area, which is now called environmental activities. And then they made some changes to the structure of movement and creative activities and again, you know, retained the name movement and creative activities and adjusted the number of lessons in its delivery for it to be 31 lessons a week down from 35. Now, something that's very important to note about the lower primary curriculum is there was another review that happened in 2022. And this review targeted the language learning areas and how it was delivered. The main change that was done was re renaming literacy activities to indigenous language activities and reducing the number of lessons per week, and then getting the remaining lessons per week and issuing them to English and to Kiswahili so that those get a bit more. That was the change that happened in 2022. Upper primary, here there's a bit more in terms of change. So the overall number of learning areas was reduced from 11 to eight. So a reduction by three. And then the lessons per week from 40 lessons per week to 35 lessons per week. So how was this achieved? Uh, home science and agriculture were integrated into a new learning area called agriculture and nutrition. Physical health education and creative arts were put together into a learning area called creative activities. And then there was the removal of the requirement for other languages that had uh, two lessons in a week. So that was removed in order to reduce that overall number. So that's a change for upper primary. Junior school, which by the way is no longer called junior secondary, that was one of the recommendations this committee made, uh, this working party made earlier in their work. Uh, in junior school, there are a lot more changes. Um, the overall number of learning areas is down from 14 to 9. That's a big uh, reduction. And then the overall number of lessons per week is 45 to 41. So not that big. So how was it done? Health education and integrated science were put together into a learning area called integrated science. Life skills, social studies were put together into a learning area called social studies. Home science and agriculture were put together into a learning area called agriculture and nutrition. And then computer studies, which was an optional learning area. Business studies, which was compulsory. Pre-technical, which was compulsory, have been put together into one learning area called pre-technical studies, which is compulsory. Okay. And then physical education and sports, which was compulsory, I believe. And then visual arts and performing arts were put together into a new learning area called creative arts and sports. All those other optional learning areas like French, you know, the foreign languages, uh, the indigenous languages and the Kenya sign language, all those remain, but they are optional. They can be done by the schools as uh, extracurricular activities. So as you can see, the biggest change happens here in junior school. And the big issue was many schools were really complaining about the, 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 of course, the large number of learning areas, but then the bigger issue were the optional ones. Not many schools were able to implement all those optional learning areas. So the big change here is that there's no more optional learning area required by the curriculum designs. 
the, all the nine that are there now are compulsory. So in summary, uh, no change in pre-primary, a small change in lower primary, that's grade one to three, uh, but slightly bigger change in upper primary, that's grade four to grade six, and a significant change in junior school, which used to be called junior secondary, but now it's junior school. Big change there. So what implications will it have in terms of how teachers teach, how schools organize their stuff, how schools organize their offering? We'll wait to see.